I drank pots and pots and pots and pots of strong black coffee, trying to keep my sleepy soul awake. But the sleepiness still comes along, and when it does, it's fast and strong. I end up with a bad case of the shakes. Hey, good morning. It's Guido coming at you with this coffee talk. Happy Father's Day. I've got my coffee with my fruit motif right here. Like I said, it is Father's Day, and we're going to talk about three things today on Coffee Talk. We are going to talk about Artie. Artie. But we're not going to talk about necessarily the mechanics of it. We're going to actually talk about the toxicity of the argument that happens when we talk about Artie. We are also going to talk about anime tanks. That's my cringe. Not much of an actor. Yep, we're going to talk about the new anime tanks. And then we're going to talk about the rank battles and how those are kind of going. But it is Father's Day, so what we're going to start with are some dad jokes. All right, number one dad joke. How do you tell if somebody at a party is a fighter pilot? Don't worry, he'll tell you. This one comes from my son, the next one. Rhino walks into a bar. The entire place gets up and leaves because they can see the potential danger here. <laughs> I am laughing at my own jokes. That's good. All right, I got two more for you. How come the animals of the savannah can't take any tests? Because of all the cheetahs. And why do they get in a lot more trouble when they get caught? Well, that's because of all the lion. All righty. Anyway, Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Leave a dad joke down in the comments if you got one. You got to love those things. And we will get on with talking about Artie, talking about anime cringe tanks, and talking about ranked battles. All right, let's get started talking about the toxicity of the Artie debate. There is not much else in the game that we talk about on the forums or discuss that is more toxic than getting into the arty discussion. Perhaps the rigging discussion can get that way, especially when we start throwing out words like baddie and such. But the arty one is definitely up there as one of the more toxic subjects, and why is that? First, let me talk about why I kind of brought this up. Is I put a video a few days ago called Skill vs. Click, where I had a pretty good game going with a scout and I got nuked by an arty who was sitting on the red line. And I discussed in there about how I was really enjoying that game up to the point a guy in the very back of the map was able to nuke me. And there were some good comments in there. Obviously it was going slightly negative. I try not to do that very much. There are a few videos like that on there and they typically are around arty subjects. But one of the comments uh, kind of struck me and it got me to thinking. And what the guy said was, so when you play Artie, you use skill, map knowledge, superior positioning. When you get hit by Artie, they are just clickers. And it's a valid comment, actually. And it really speaks to the argument or the arguments that we end up having about Artie. Because what ends up happening is if you're trying to discuss the mechanics about how it fits within the game, it often devolves into you're a baddie, you're a clicker, and you, you are an elite player who doesn't care about anything, which is essentially what it boils down to, other than your stats, I suppose, is what they're trying to say there. And again, it's a valid comment, but what I was trying to convey in that video was not that I was calling the, the guy playing Artie a name. The point is that I don't like the game mechanic, where you can sit on the cor in the corner and affect the battle from the red line. And it goes back to other videos that I've had where I discussed the fact that Artie is not in danger while you're playing the game, not until the very end or on the very rare occasion that it gets countered. So the problem then becomes we start calling each other names. You're a clicker, you're a baddie, that kind of thing. And we really need to try to get away from that so we can just discuss the game mechanic itself and how it actually affects the game. So I am not calling somebody who's playing Artie a jerk or I don't think that they're a lesser person. And I certainly don't think that I'm a better person because... I am driving a tank at that point. Which is going to bring me to the second point about this as well. The argument often comes down to people looking at each other's records and finding out that they do or don't play Artie. And what ends up happening is if you play Artie, then you're a hypocrite all of a sudden. Which is, of course, a rhetorical and ridiculous type of argument in a debate. In fact, somebody who has a lot of Artie experience should probably have their opinion taken into more account. Again, let's not get into the fact that just because I have played a lot of Artie, I believe I'm 100% correct. But if you don't have any experience in Artie, then certainly your arguments about it 
at least as far as how it is actually played, are, are probably hold a little bit less weight. The other argument is that you haven't played it at all, so how can you know? And often, in the same thread on the forum, you'll have both people arguing both those points. So either you are a hypocrite because you do play it, or you don't know what you're talking about because you don't play it. And both of them are incorrect. Having experience in something gives you a good idea of what's going on, and it doesn't necessarily make you a hypocrite as far as not liking the actual game mechanic, which is where I fall. I've played a lot of Artie. I wanted to get the crews. I wanted to do the missions. I wanted to explore the whole game. I wanted to know how to defeat Artie, how to get around it, just like the I play all the other classes for the exact same reason. But after all that experience, I've come down on the point of I don't like the game mechanic. It has nothing to do with whether I don't like the person. The way they speak or the way they type as far as the forums go, there's plenty of other reasons to not like them past not or past worrying about what they play in the game. So that's kind of how the toxicity of the arty argument ends up going. And it's unfortunate because we can't have a good discussion about the game mechanic itself and what it really means to the game. I'll be honest, for a long time I felt like we should just remove it. I say we as if I have any power, but I have zero. But we as a community, I, w I wish that Wargaming would have got rid of it. For a long time, that's how I felt. But I'll say now that potentially, especially since they, they did make it less annoying, L let me sidetrack for a minute here, because they have declared victory with the already fix by taking something that was extremely annoying and bad for the game and make, made it slightly less so. I mean, that's not, that's not a fix, that's not victory. However, it trended in the right direction. So I guess at this point I would say that, and this is hard to say, maybe it does have a place in the game, but it has to be brought more in line with the rest of the game. As far as it needs to be in more in danger, it needs to play the game like most of the other tanks do. And I don't mean by driving around and trying to get to the front. Anyway, I've got a lot of other videos talking about that. And we're really only addressing the toxicity of the argument. And like I said just a second ago, it, it is unfortunate that it has got to the point or that it continues to be at the point, you know, this has been happening for six years now, that every discussion about it devolves into you're a baddie and you're an elitist. I mean, essentially is what it comes down to right there. If we could just discuss how the actual game mechanic affects the game, I think we'd be well ahead at that point. Well ahead. Have another drink. Father's Day morning. Let's move on to the next topic, which is, I'm going to remind myself now. Oh my goodness. I knew I shouldn't have reminded myself. Cringe. <laughs> anime tanks. Okay, let's talk about anime tanks. Maybe I'm going to need another hit here. No, there's nothing in there, but I may wish for it after this. Okay. This one is going to be a minefield, and not just for this video, but for the game in general. Uh, it's already started on the forums. The Southeast Asia server already has these things, and it's hugely popular, popular over there. There can be no doubt about it. I imagine they're selling a lot of these, and the question then becomes, will these things come to NA and EU? And I'm going to say probably at some point, because it's also hugely popular here. The question then becomes why. Why are they coming? Well, obviously content, the company would like to make some money off of them. They have a tie-in, I'm assuming, with the company that has, is it Valkyria Chronicles? All that stuff, so all those reasons. And I have no problem with Wargaming making money. Not that they need my approval for such, but just as a stance, whatever. That's what they're here for. Very good. Cool. And it's also the reason I've got the black mutts here, because this thing got a lot of hate as well, and I think it's sort of related to what we're talking about here. When they released this, the black, and I believe the T-34 black tank, just a reskinned version of another tank, people lost their minds. And I'll be quite honest, I don't quite understand that. Now, I got this because there was a bit of a glitch, and it ended up being $20, and I was able to get it for 20 bucks. Uh, let me say that, because I've taken a hard stance on people exploiting that I bought it after Wargaming came out and specifically said, you know what, we goofed on that, but we're going to leave it. So if you want it, go for it. And I did. So I have this Black Mutts. I don't have the other one. 
So I have no problem with reskinning tanks, making it black. I'd appreciate if they didn't make them pink or weird zebra colors or stuff like that. But that's just a personal preference. If somebody wants a black mutts, who cares? Sell every tank that's a premium in a different color if you want. People can buy the one that they want. So I do understand that, that creeps a little bit towards the whole anime tank idea as well. But I think there's a few more things in play with the anime tank idea. So as far as the why goes, obviously they want to increase their content. They've got some tie-ins. They want to make some money. And it may actually tie into the new direction that they're taking, which is creeping towards a certain type of gameplay, which we'll cover in a few minutes here. So as I said, there's no doubt it's popular. If you go to the North American forums, you'll find that there's an anime and manga thread that's 800 something pages long and if you delve into that thing uh, put on your galoshes because at points you're going to find some pretty creepy stuff in there I'll be quite honest now that's a personal problem and a personal preference and some of the people watching here may actually like anime and that's fine again I don't you don't need my approval to say it's fine uh, obviously you can do what you want but what I don't like is that for quite not quite often but sometimes it really gets into a very creepy trench coat wearing kind of area and I'm not saying that there's a whole lot of that in that thread but if you get in there anyway so that's kind of my little issue with the anime idea in itself and then we get to the fact that this is sort of a cartoon tank and people are going to say of course there are fake fantasy tanks in the game already but there is a core idea of this game that started which was kind of historically accurate obviously we've gotten quite a ways away from that I understand that but there's a core probably older like me gamer group who that was kind of the thing that they liked about the game in general and we've creeped away for it, away from it and creeped away from it but this anime thing is probably will be the the final nail in the coffin as far as that goes especially if they implemented it on NA and EU because at that point anything really goes once you have uh, included a Japanese anime tank or two into the game there's really no reason to say nothing can be added into the game as far as tie-ins and making money and all that again the company making money that's fine but it's just a very strange direction and I think what they're going to end up finding there's going to be quite a bit of friction from the older crowd and the younger generally younger people who like the anime uh, manga kind of thing Which brings me to probably what's going to end up being one of the worst problems with it, especially if it's as stands. And you've got to watch Quickie Baby's video, which I will link down in the comments there and pin it to the top. Because he really gets into it pretty well. Talks about how OP these tanks are. And from what I can tell, looking at the numbers and then looking at the gameplay, again, it's one game that he showed, you know, that's how those things go. But wow, it's looking pretty bad. And it ties into what we've been talking about for weeks now and months, especially with the new premium tanks. They are creeping more and more towards OP and pay to win. And he says this one is blatantly pay to win. And I tend to agree with what he is looking at right there, especially if it comes in the fashion that it is. So, well, let me t talk about one other thing. The voices talk about cringe the voice oh my goodness the voices are horrific hopefully there's a way to switch to national voices or something with that tank or i don't know that it's um wow just wow Good, cringe anyway i'm really trying to tiptoe around this and not insult people it goes back to what we just talked about with the arty thing i'm not insulting the person uh it is a art form that i am not interested in <laughs> and to some extent uh am actually opposed to when it gets into the creeper area but it's just tied into the whole how the game is developing and, and what is the direction and I would say that bottom line with these things is if it comes out to NA and EU in the form that it has in Asia server and the numbers stay the same then I think that we can officially at that point say the game has gone to, pay, to a pay to win model and this tank is its coming out party. You know, it's been foreshadowed with the, the 252 and the Patriot and the GF. And, of course, there's been a lot of angst. But there have always been kind of arguments that it's not quite there yet. But if these things come out in their current form in EU and NA, I have no doubt they'll be popular. There will be a lot of them sold. They'll be all over the, the game. And we can probably make the official 
stick the flag in the sand and say, this development team at Wargaming has decided to switch to the pay-to-win model with their premium tanks. So, that being said, let's have another drink of coffee. And we'll move on to some actually pretty decent news, and we'll talk about rank battles. You guys done throwing stuff at me for the enemy tank discussion? <laughs> I hope it wasn't like little dolls or something. I'm kidding. I got my little Star Wars things up here anyway. All right, so let's talk about ranked. Good news. Something that's good news. So they brought ranked battles on. You know, I'm not a fan of the prizes as far as getting bonuses to good players. I've already come down on that side on the side of that being bad. Uh, I'm not actually a huge fan of ranked battles because it splits the community. I'd rather see end tier and more of a top tier tanker kind of thing across all tiers. However, that being said, as far as their implementation goes, I think there's some good news here. Uh, maybe they've learned some lessons. Recently, they just announced that they have extended hours, so that's good. That may actually get me in there a little bit more. Looks like weekdays 1,700 to 2,200. And weekends, 1,600 to 2,200, or 19 to 1 o'clock Eastern, and 20 to 01 Eastern time. So 8 to 1 in the morning, it looks like. Anyway, so they've extended the hours. So what they did is they started small. It, this is beta. They always said that, so everyone has to understand that. And now they're expanding the hours out a little bit. And I think that's going to help a lot of people play the, play the ranked battles. I would say one of the reasons it was so small is they were worried about rigging and valid because the game community will rig at the drop of a hat. They've proven that in the future or in the past. So that's good. That means that they're doing some incremental changes and improvements and they're listening to people. I do approve of that. They just sent out a questionnaire. Hopefully everybody answered that. There was even and it was in game, which was outstanding. You actually didn't have to go to a website or anything or do any kind of login. And you could actually leave comments in game on their questionnaire. So I thought that was good. I, I Good on you, Wargaming. Outstanding. And I left plenty of comments. Let's talk about how it's going. I played it a little bit, all right? So I haven't tryharded yet. I'm probably going to do that in the near future and try to get to rank 5, see if I can even manage to do that. I did fail my way to rank 3 and rank 2 with Artie. So that I think that's fair enough. Rank 3 should be probably fairly easy to get to. So I can't comment about 4 or 5 other than what I have read. But as far as Artie goes... Quite honestly, if you want, it's kind of funny that I'm discussing this since I just had an Artie discussion earlier about how I didn't like the game mechanic. But my question was, hey, can I play Artie and then fail my way into rank 3, which I did. And I say fail, I won more than I lost, so that was on the bonus side. But on nearly every game but one, I think, I still went up a rank, or went up a chevron anyway. Because if you're in the top 3 experience then you still get a chevron on the losing side well guess which class of tank has a really good chance of being in the top three of experience because it lasts so long in the game well that would be already so what i did is i played my bat chat 55 58 uh, i think i even played the t92 potentially or maybe it was the object 261 but the 55 58 really seemed to be the best one with that little auto loader on it Shooting at light skin tanks, knocking out fast tanks, all the things Artie does now, which are ridiculous. And then just, if it's a loss, sitting back and trying to get as much damage towards the end as you could. Probably that's not going to work to get you up to tier 5, but I, or rank 5, sorry. I may actually try that just to see what happens if I can achieve rank 5 in a tier 10 Artie in the 55-58. Uh, or just try hard with the regular tank. So it's been a mixed bag as far as that goes, but I think the good news is that I was talking about that Wargaming is actually developing this in what seems like a logical and sane manner. So good on them for that. Uh, I really don't like ranked battles that much, as I've already stated, and the prizes are probably the worst part. But the good news, as I said, not a bad development system so far, and they seem to be listening to people. So props to you, Wargaming. Thanks for that. Drink a coffee in, in your uh, honor, since I haven't said too much nice about you on most of these videos. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, happy Father's Day. I hope it uh, treats you good. Uh, whether you are a father, 
your father's around, grandfather, you know a father who's a good guy, uh, you know, give him a bro hug or something like that. Throw him a beer, make him some coffee, make him some breakfast, make him some dinner, and then we will see ya. I almost forgot. Make sure you subscribe, like, follow, whatever it is, social media-wise, that you see this thing on. And I got one more dad joke for you. All right, you ready? It's a knock-knock joke. All right, you start.